Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to a deep dive into my Minecraft Enderman theory by Retro Gaming Man. Now, I have not seen this, but this is basically talking more about the Minecraft Enderman. And yeah, I remember a while back, MatPat made the Minecraft Enderman theory. And honestly, that was insane. Like, I think it was well made. So I think this video is basically to talk about maybe their idea of what the Enderman is and also maybe what, you know, what MatPat left out, I think. But, um, yeah, anyways, guys, read the links in the description. Make sure to do retro gaming now. Thanks for the description. Let's just get right into it. With the exception of the Creeper, the Enderman is Minecraft's most well-known mob. But there is far more than meets the eye to the dark and lanky figure. Few things in Minecraft have as much mystery and ambiguity to their origins and reason for being. Damn, this music. Who are these shadowy figures, and what do they want? To find the answer, we must examine the clues, both subtle and hidden in plain sight. In doing so, right. we can learn about the true story of Minecraft. Welcome to Deep Dive, the first of a series of episodes where I try to learn about the strangest and most obscure parts of games. The Enderman is a great place to start. They are an ocean of mystery. Join me for a dive beneath the waves. I can agree with that. Endermen are different from other mobs in many ways. They're neutral mobs that only attack if provoked. They can pick up blocks and they spawn in all three dimensions. Perhaps nothing is more interesting than their teleportation capabilities. Seemingly at will, they can almost instantaneously move up to 32 blocks away. When we look at the other Minecraft mobs, this is such a unique ability. Zombies, skeletons, and their variants can walk. Spiders can climb, but so can real life spiders. And several mobs can fly, although these are typically more advanced enemies, such as the Phantom or the Ghast. But in the overworld, right. no other mob can teleport. If we can figure out a way to understand how teleportation works... He does make a good point, that is true. The they are the only mob that can teleport. To do so, we must travel to the end. This place is dominated by the Endermen. But they're not the only life form here. In fact, they're not even the most populous. In terms of sheer numbers, chorus trees vastly outnumber Endermen. But Retro, that's not fair, you say, because chorus trees are plants. And you'd be exactly right. But I'm gonna make the argument that the chorus tree is the root to solving the mystery of the Endermen. Soon, you'll see why that's important. So wait, is he gonna talk about the fact that the chorus plants you know, turned the people into the Endermen, because that is the theory. So, maybe? Okay. Let's take a look at some properties of the chorus tree. It was based off the Joshua tree, endemic to a small region of the American West. Chorus trees have multiple branches and can grow to very tall heights. They also produce chorus flowers. Planting a chorus flower on instone is enough for a new tree to grow. This is not too atypical. There's a phenomena called vegetative reproduction, where a new plant grows. Oh yeah, plant. that's asexual so reproduction. Fit, right? Well, not quite. The strangest thing is the chorus fruit, which comes from the plant body when broken, not from the flower as we would typically expect. This fruit also does not contain seeds. We can't craft chorus tree seeds from the fruit in the same way that we can with melon or pumpkin. Well, no, Again, duh. this can happen in real life, so nothing we've seen so far is strictly out of the question. The chorus tree is just a plant that happens to have some unusual characteristics. But everything changes when we actually take a bite out of the chorus fruit. We then you discover teleport. its most important property. It allows the player to teleport short distances randomly. My theory suggests that this right here is the first place where teleportation occurs in the Minecraft universe, as it's the only non-sentient life form that allows this to happen. Since right now we're trying to understand teleportation, I'm going to make a list called the Teleportation Pyramid. Okay. The bottom of the pyramid will have the most simple types of teleportation, those which have the fewest requirements and are the most common in Minecraft. As we work our way up, we'll find more and more complex types of teleportation, with fewer and fewer natural occurrences. Hopefully, this will create a picture of how teleportation works. Okay. So, I'm going to put chorus fruit teleportation at the very That's bottom of the interesting. pyramid for several reasons. Within the end, it's by far the most widely available form of teleportation, but it's also the weakest. There's no way to decide where to go, and its range is only 8 blocks. My argument is that all other forms of teleportation are either enabled by or inspired by the chorus fruit. So yeah, like the, the Enderman ate the chorus fruit and then learned how to teleport. The chorus fruit. 
and there's a big piece of evidence for this in the end, the shulker. Shulkers can teleport. When breaking the block they sit on, oh, yeah, they, they teleport can. up to 17 blocks away to land on another block. This is actually pretty important for a few reasons. First, it seems fairly likely that their teleportation is based upon coarse fruit. Cooking coarse fruit results in popped coarse fruit, which can be used to craft purple blocks which look very Oh, what? I didn't even know you could do that. It's not a stretch to think that shulker shells are actually derived from coarse fruit, and that this has something to do with their teleportation capabilities. The second interesting thing is that it's implied that shulkers have some level of sentience. They can choose where their teleportation takes them, since they'll always land on another block if they can find one. This is the first place we see control teleportation. Somehow, shulkers have managed to harness the properties of the chorus fruit. This puts them squarely above chorus fruit on the teleportation True. pyramid. But how? What are they doing that allows them to control their teleportation instead of just randomly zipping around? We'll get to that soon. The Endermen, okay. This is all well and good, but you may be wondering what shulkers have to do with Endermen. After all, you clicked on this video to learn about Endermen, not Chorus Fruit. So well, let's duh. Take for a little bit and talk about them. <laughs> I think it's clear that the Endermen are the most intelligent oh, mob within the end, and perhaps in all of Minecraft. <laughs> I mentioned a few of these features in the Iceberg videos, including their human-like speech. Oh yeah. What's up? Yeah. But one of the clearest indicators of their intelligence is their building capability. This is one of the things that makes Minecraft, well, Minecraft. It's even in the name. Fundamentally, we can boil the game down into destroying things in the world, mining, and building things in the world, crafting. Lots of mobs can destroy things, such as the creeper. The Endermen are the only mob which can do both, by picking up and placing blocks. Endermen True. are creators at heart, the mob which is the truest embodiment of what Minecraft is. So that's just adding more to like map pads theory, a technically. Limited place. There's an extremely small number of blocks to work with. They can use endstone and create purple blocks from chorus trees, but beyond that, there's just not much. So, being the creative beings that they are, they try to find unique ways to use their limited materials. Wait, hold on. We'll talk about obsidian and other materials on the central island soon. Stay tuned. Okay. Well, yeah, also, because they could pick up, like, overworld blocks and do stuff with that. Well, I guess it's also why they teleported to there, maybe? They are. They tried to find unique ways to use their limited materials. Somehow, the Endermen were able to develop the Ender Pearl, a much, much more powerful teleportation device than Chorus Fruit. The word pearl is very important. True. What is a pearl? Well, it's a hard object produced by mollusks, such as oysters or mussels. These animals often have hard shells with a soft, fleshy interior, and the pearl develops on the inside. Does that remind you of anything we've seen in the end? That description sounds very similar to the shulker. What if in right. and shulkers? And it's the reason that shulkers can control their teleportation. That's an interesting Could theory. The Recognize this and figure out a way to harvest the pearls. This That's a very in interesting shulker theory. Shulkers are commonly produced using mussel or oyster farms. We can only find shulkers in in cities. Perhaps the Endermen built these cities as farms for shulkers. There's a massive center column. So they're like ender, they're like end crabs or no the oysters. Note that they wouldn't have end rods yet as those require blaze powder. Again, we'll get to this. Okay. So he's just explaining like loopholes that aren't explained into the video yet. Moving enough ender pearls so that every Enderman could have the ability of controlled teleportation. So let's take a look at the teleportation pyramid again. I'm going to put ender pearls at the same level as shulkers. I think they're very close. Makes connected. sense, I guess. It's hard to know for sure which came first. The endermen are a bit tricky. I'm inclined to think they, they are because they could be they, they could be like tool. lower or higher. The only reason that they can teleport further away is because they're more intelligent than the shulkers. But both are using ender pearls to control their teleportation. So I'm going to put them on the same level, but connected oh, okay. to the pearl. Escaping the end. If my theory is true, then this is what we've got now. I don't care about intelligent mouse. endermen who can build structures. They've used these structures as massive shulker farms, allowing them to teleport between islands in the end. But even with this capability, they're still stuck in a barren wasteland. So inevitably, they start to think about the potential of teleportation. Is it possible to use this newfound power in a way that can give them the resources they need to build more things? Profit. Is there more to see than just the wasteland of the end? 
I think that these questions led them to the development of the portal technology that allowed them to travel to the overworld. They cleared out a massive island in the inn for safety, then created inn gateways to ensure that they would be the only ones who could teleport to and from the island. Then they okay. constructed the portal in this safe zone, a thousand blocks away from the rest of the islands. I don't think they knew exactly how this technology would work. Interesting. But then what about Somehow, the Ender Dragon? How does that come into play? They sent some brave scout Endermen into the portal, equipped with pearls and other supplies. The scouts teleported to a very strange world indeed, with mysterious terrain, plants, and creatures. They were also shocked to find that there was no portal back home to the end. These Endermen were trapped in a bizarre dimension with no clear path back, and more importantly, no way to communicate to the others that they had survived. However, the dimension they spawned into was rich in resources. Hundreds of blocks they had never seen before were suddenly available, if only they could figure out a way back to the end. But it was a dangerous world too. This new dimension was rampant with a mysterious blue substance that burned their skin. Oh, water. Yeah. The, sometimes. the Enderman needed a safe place to live. Yeah, so is he going to explain that? A stronghold, if you will. So that's what they did. The Enderman got to work. So the that's the theory of the stronghold. The various beasts that that they the built the stronghold. Strongholds have a very similar also to get back to the end. Complete. Notice the similarity between the torch and the portal out in the end. That is true. If we look at that, that does actually look pretty similar. Stairs and slabs. The Enderman quickly learned that stone was the most common material and they built their strongholds accordingly. The Endermen spent a lot of time in this stronghold, researching their new world and learning everything that they could. They began work on a portal back to the end, but no matter what they did, they could never quite figure out how to activate it. This was, of course, only their second time using portal technology, and they still didn't have a clear idea of what the requirements were for interdimensional travel. At some point, one of the Endermen discovered a mysterious purple portal in the overworld. The Nether. This connected to a different dimension. So that's and how they get the end rods? The end offered a two-way connection back and forth. The Endermen studied this portal, trying to figure out why it worked when theirs didn't. They knew that the portal was made of obsidian, an extremely hard material found in the overworld. They also realized that there was another important element, heat. The nether portal would only work if it was increased to a high enough temperature. Perhaps this was the So is that explaining the lava the under it? To the end. So the Endermen tried heating the end portal using lava, but it still wasn't enough. It somehow needed to be even hotter. They explored the nether more, looking for something that was hotter than lava. Yeah, because that's why they're also in the nether. Blazes. When killed, they dropped blaze rods, which could easily be ground up into a powder. And that was the key. End the pearls. Puzzle, or no, eyes of ender. powder with ender pearls produced a new, more advanced teleportation device, an eye of ender. Finally, the endermen were able to complete their portal back to the end. Upon return, the scouts were lauded as heroes. They had proven that interdimensional teleportation was possible, Remember, the Endermen in the end still had no idea whether their portal actually went to another dimension or just killed whoever entered. But now there was proof. True. Five Endermen returning from the overworld. This allowed vast numbers of Endermen to leave nice the end and explore the overworld and nether. They developed their strongholds more fully, adding cages for experimentation on mobs and libraries to store the secrets they had learned. They also built massive nether fortresses as a way to easily obtain blaze rods. Ah, okay. Okay, that's interesting as well. I like the contrast. Rods, a source of light in their shulker farms. They were also crucial to potion brewing, a new technology that the Endermen experimented with in their cities. The Endermen also discovered that Eyes of Ender could create Ender chests, allowing for easy interdimensional travel of riches from the overworld to the end. The Endermen were flourishing as a society, and they grouped stationed in all three dimensions, some in the end, some in strongholds, and some in other fortresses. They had limitless creativity and limitless resources. What could go wrong? Playing with fire. So my guess is that th the next theory is going to be explaining like how the Ender Dragon comes into play. Maybe they created the Ender Dragon? Let's take a step back and update our teleportation pyramid. The end gateways are a little bit above Ender Pearls, allowing much further teleportation. Above that is the end portal and the nether portal, allowing for teleportation across dimensions. It appears as though a few things are necessary for interdimensional travel, heat and extremely hard materials. Nether portals are built from obsidian and are clearly activated using the heat of fire. End portals also use heat in the form of lava and eyes of ender. Furthermore, end portal frames are indestructible in survival, much like bedrock. The hardest one to explain is the exit portal, which the Endermen used to leave the inn for the first time. It clearly satisfies the density requirement. 
but where does the heat come from? Some people are going to disagree with me on this part of my theory, but I think it's possible the inn is much hotter than the overworld, although probably not as hot as the nether. Uh... There's never a day-night cycle, just constant light from the harsh sky. Innstone also looks bleached, almost like an asteroid or the moon. So maybe the heat requirement wasn't quite as strict when they built the exit port. Others have theorized about the end being an asteroid belt. It's no proof that it's a hot place though. So essentially make a guess here. Okay, so I mean, I think this one, this bit is a stretch, I will say. Like I agree with him because he says that like this one you're not going to agree with and I don't really agree with that. I think it's, it's a cool theory with like you know, just how, like, that works with the overworld, but, like, the end, they could have just figured something out, I guess, maybe. I don't really know. I, I feel like with that, that is a loophole in the theory, but it's very, I feel like it's very small. They could have figured something out where, like, something that has to do with, like, friction or something, maybe. I don't know. Honestly, I, I like the contrast between this theory and uh, Matt Pat's theory, where his theory was that there's ancient builders and they became the Endermen. And this theory is that the Endermen actually created the structures themselves and they were just trying to figure out how to get out of the end because they were very bored with the resources, like there wasn't that much stuff for them. So they just decided to go to these other places. And like the re main reason why there's fortresses is because they built those to harvest blaze rods to get like Eyes of Ender. That is really interesting, honestly. This, I like the contrast between the two theories. There, there are like similarity, similarities between them. Like for example, how like, I guess where it's like a ancient society kind of like built everything. But like the difference there is that the, there's ancient builders that turn into the Endermen where this one is like, oh, it's the Endermen themselves who did it. So that is a nice contrast, I will say. Portal. I'm not completely sure, so if you have any ideas about this, let me know. Anyways, the Endermen at least had a speculative recipe for interdimensional travel. I think it's only natural that they began to wonder how far it could take them. They discovered the overworld and the nether, and now they had many more types of resources to play with. Would it be possible to use the recently discovered obsidian and heat to find a fourth dimension? A fifth dimension? A tenth dimension even? Their minds raced with anticipation. Perhaps they were only at the surface level of a very deep iceberg of possibilities. Okay. So they began to look for new ways to build a portal using the requirements that they had discovered. Someone realized that a gas dropped a tear, which, when combined with an Eye of Ender, produced a mysterious new crystal. Could this be the breakthrough they needed? They got to work, mining obsidian uh, through the overworld and building massive pillars. And it the spawned the Ender the Dragon. Dragon. Notice how the layout of 10 obsidian pillars in a loop is very similar to the minimum nether portal which also uses 10 obsidian so that is interesting i will say okay that's an interesting you know little like i guess little detail i'd, I'd call it i guess enough to create a portal to a new world after weeks and months of construction they were finally ready one by one they placed the in crystals on the obsidian pillars lighting them on fire as they went the endermen waited with nervous excitement until the final crystal was placed but disaster struck. Instead of a portal to wondrous new riches, a terrifying beast appeared. Yeah. It was a dragon, fueled by the cosmic energy of the Inn Crystals. It destroyed the exit portal, severing the connection between the End and the Overworld and Nether. It broke the Inn Gateway, trapping the Innermen on the main island. In an instant, the Innermen were suddenly a fragment of trapped species, split between dimensions. Innermen in the Overworld. Apologize about that. I don't know why it's glitching. Overworld realized that they could never return to the end, so they removed Eyes of Ender from their portals in order to keep the Overworld safe from the Ender Dragon. They destroyed their stashes of gas tears and sealed off the stronghold from the surface to prevent anyone from accidentally returning to the end. The Endermen were exiled, but they knew that they could at least keep the Overworld and its inhabitants safe. Time okay. passed, and the Endermen thought that they were forever separated from the other dimensions. But that wasn't true. The dragon was not immortal. Eventually, it died of old age, opening a portal back to the old What? World. But it also dropped an egg, which would quickly spawn a new dragon like a phoenix from the ashes, empowered by the Inn Crystals. The dragon head was used on Inn ships, which would allow the Endermen to quickly travel for the brief moments in time when the dragon was dead. No matter what they tried, however- Alright, that's an interesting theory. They were never truly safe. 
So they lived in this cycle, trying to take advantage of the few moments where the dragon was dead and the portal opened. This was a purgatory of their own design. They tried to play God, but it was their downfall. A savior appears. Oh yeah, free the end. This is the state of the Minecraft multiverse when the player starts a new game. So many years have passed that the nether portals have become broken, and only a couple Endermen remain in the overworld, with even fewer in the nether. New societies have developed. The simple-minded villagers, the scheming pillagers and illagers, and the jealous piglins. Strongholds have decayed and nether fortresses are overtaken by wither skeletons. Over time, the Endermen slowly lost their ability to build vast structures, only remembering how to pick up a few blocks. But somehow, in some way, the player appeared. The player was like the Endermen, capable of creating and destroying blocks in the world. The player was intelligent, unlike villagers. And the player was curious, exploring the world and building mm. contraptions. Redstone? The world recognized this, only attacking if provoked and even trying to communicate with the player. It was no use, however. They could only hope that the player could figure things out on their own. Slowly, the player did, building vast structures, figuring out how to get to the nether, brewing potions, enchanting weapons, and eventually discovering the end portal. The player knew what they needed to do. They entered the portal, destroyed the end crystals, and killed the dragon once and for all, freeing the end from its eternal domination. So yeah, that achievement, free the end, is very interesting. I'm not gonna go that far, but I do think that in some ways they're the embodiment of the fundamentals of Minecraft, creating and destroying the world. From a lore perspective, we don't know why the player spawned suddenly, in the same way we don't know why chorus trees started growing or why Endermen started in the end. At the end of the day, however, I think Minecraft is about the player. The player does everything the Endermen can do, but better. And ultimately, the player defeats the dragon, freeing the Endermen from their crucial mistake. True. And that's my theory. There was a lot there, oh, okay. so, so let's recap. Endermen began in the end as intelligent, creative creatures. They discovered that Shulkers produced Ender Pearls with teleportation properties. They created Okay, so now he's just recapping. In the end, but they wanted more, so they developed a portal to the overworld. However, it was one way. The scouts learned more about interdimensional travel using nether portals and discovered that blaze powder could allow them to return to the end. With this knowledge, Endermen built huge structures to protect the portal back home and to farm blaze powder. But they got greedy trying to build a bigger portal which accidentally spawned an ender dragon. It wasn't until the player came that they were freed from the cycle of death and rebirth. I think my theory explains the biggest mysteries of Minecraft. Where does teleportation come from? What is an ender pearl? Who built the strongholds, etc.? I know that this is going to be compared to map patch theory, so I might as well. One hundred percent. The strengths of my theory are compared to his. Map pad approaches it from an enderman first perspective, which initially makes sense as the endermen are clearly very important. However, I've chosen a teleportation first perspective. This solves the biggest issue with his theory: where does the ender pearl come from? Now, to his credit, he recognizes this is a problem, but in my opinion, it's too big of a problem to ignore. I just can't find a way where the Endermen could develop teleportation in the overworld. At least in the end, there's precedent. The progression from Chorus Fruit to Shulkers to Ender Pearls has a lot of evidence, as I've explained. I do like that he do he mentions that. that. Isn't bulletproof. The biggest problem is figuring out how the Endermen were able to make the portal out of the end. I'm not sure where the bedrock or even the torches came from. Honestly, though, neither of us really has a good answer to how the Endermen discovered portal technology in the first place. In my theory, the Endermen learned through trial and error. It's like fire. Humans have used fire for hundreds of thousands of years, but it wasn't until relatively recently that fire. we discovered exactly how it works. The chemistry, the chain reactions, and the specific components necessary for flame. Similarly, yeah, I do like how this mentions, like, talks about heat and, like, science and all that stuff. Much closer to learning the ingredients. Still, they didn't fully understand what they were doing, and they accidentally spawned the dragon. Another minor problem with my theory is that Shulkers don't actually drop Ender Pearls in game. Yeah, if true. I'd be just about 100% confident in my Ender Pearl origin theory. One more question is why would the Endermen need diamond armor and the like in the end? Why bring it over if they couldn't use it? True, true. There are a few odds and ends that I should mention. First, I think that Endermites are a type of parasite that grows in Shulkers alongside Ender Pearls. That's why Endermen attack them. This happens in real life as well. Pea crabs can infest oysters and mussels. But what about silverfish? Why is there a silverfish spawner by the portal? My best guess is that it comes from some sort of a reaction with the nearby eyes of Ender in the portal. Maybe silverfish are a mutated version of Endermites? Spawners are a pretty complex topic. 
Notice the many similarities, uh, including the hape shit. Yeah, yeah uh, so I remember that, yeah, there was one video where, yeah, there was also a theory that silverfish are endermites, and yeah, that, that actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Topic from a lore perspective, so I'll save them for another video. Also, what are the elytra? Why would Enderman need the Oh yeah, the Elytra or the Elytra. These questions necessarily conflict with my theory, but they just might take some more thought to figure them out. Yeah. So I do actually really like his theory. I think I think it's actually pretty solid. I like that at the end he mentions that it's from like a teleportation standpoint and really like looking into you know how they actually got the idea of teleportation rather than just Enderman. And yeah, that is true. Like and I am glad that he actually knows that his video is going to be compared to game theory 100%. So I do actually like that, honestly. I think this is actually a really solid theory. I think his wording is really well, like, really well put together to the point where, like, I feel like he's credible when he's talking. So, yeah, honestly, I... I like, I like the theory. I think it's actually a pretty interesting theory. And I, I'm honestly thinking that there are definitely some loopholes here and there, but they're very minor. I feel like there are some things left out here and there. Like, for example, I'd say the villagers and villagers, like where do they come from, I guess. But that's not really like the point of the video. You know, like all the stuff that wasn't really mentioned and, you know, wasn't really theorized, but it was minor. You know, that's not really in the video because that's not what the video is about so you know i actually do like this theory a lot i think it's well put together well made and yeah honestly it actually makes me skeptical ske ske skeptical uh about map pants theory honestly so i i do actually like it i do like the difference honestly it is it is nice it is very well done and well put together and i really do like it but yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed, leave a like, and subscribe to my channel. See you next one. Bye!